Hello, I'm Odin, and today I get to review the new AnyCubic Mega X 3D printer. The Mega X is AnyCubic's newest printer, and it's a big one. With a large build volume, dual Y axis rails, and dual Z axis threaded rods, the Mega X has some big promises. Let's check it out. The box it came in was pretty big. Cool. My Mega X came with a good assortment of tools, a spool of PLA filament, and a spare extruder. That's a spare head, really? Assembly looks pretty easy, and it was. Installing the frame was easy with the help of a second person, and then a few plugs that are color coded. Plug it in and Leveling the print bed was very easy with the large leveling dials. And in what felt like no time at all, I was running the test print. I'm impressed with how smooth these owls are, and the details look really sharp. But I don't want to print just owls. With the new Star Trek Picard series coming out, I printed this weeks before the show was released, I wanted to make a next generation style phaser. The Mega X ships with Kira as a slicer program, and the rafting seems a little difficult to remove from the print. Now I know that there are other slicers, some of which are better than Kira, but I wanted to use what came with the printer. And overall, I'm not upset with Kira, it does a fine job. I just know that you can get better rafting on your prints. Oh, yeah. I spent a little time clearing up the bottom from the rafting. It's really difficult to get thin parts to separate. And then I can move on to faster methods, and some that are even faster for larger flat areas. Okay, got some basic sanding done. I'm gonna start doing the whole primer, sand, primer, sand portion of this, because I actually wanna finish this phaser for this video. But that wasn't the only thing I printed. I also printed something else small, a Type 1 phaser from the original series Star Trek. I am an old school Trekkie, so I really wanted to get the original series style phaser, and the Type 1 was actually a really nice little kit with parts, so I'm excited to put this together. But it seems a shame to do a review video with a printer with an extra large print bed to do small items. So while I'm getting these painted up, I'm gonna print something that's gonna utilize the large print bed. While the Mega X is printing somewhere that's dust free, I applied filler primer to both phasers and sanded it down to the layer lines. Now I do this step twice for both of them, just spray and sand and then spray and sand again. Then I decide I want to use some filler putty as well. Now the stuff that I have is actually pretty old and a little dried out but I was able to thin it with some lacquer thinner, and the putty still works. After that dries, more sanding on the putty layer. One last coat of primer and sanded smooth so I can add the paint. The body of the classic phaser is black, and I use super glue to stick the parts together. While I was tempted to leave the next generation phaser primer gray, I decided that a darker silver was a better choice. The accents on the next gen phaser are all black, so I used some hobby paints and brushed it all on by hand. The accents on the original phaser are all silver, except for the little brass emitter that goes in the front. The controls in the next generation phaser are ivory and light gray, now, some of these next-gen phasers have a green LED power meter, and some do not. Since this one printed out solid, I decided to skip the power meter. But one of the fun parts on the classic phaser is the clear power meter dial. To make the cover, I cut a piece of acrylic to the right shape and then sand it smooth. Then I can flame polish the plastic. 
Now, you need to be careful to not just burn it all up because matte gas burns a little too hot for plastics. That's a little too much. That's too much. I can use some clear ATG tape to secure the dial to the cover and then another layer of tape to stick it to the body. I don't think I've ever had one of these. This is cool. <laughs> the classic phaser is a type one phaser or cricket phaser. And the Star Trek The Next Generation phaser is a type two phaser. It's a bit stronger and a little bit bigger. Now, the prop masters for Star Trek The Next Generation wanted to get away from the pistol look that the classic series had with their type two phaser. Because when Star Trek was first on television, Westerns were still pretty popular. And for that large print that I did, it's John Luke Picard himself. Or maybe this is Professor Picard? Or Starfleet Captain Xavier? I am really happy with Anycubic's Mega X printer. Now I've printed a number of things with it, not just what you see here, but I had also used it to make the needed replacement parts for my Eye of Agamotto. And I found the Mega X reliable. There was really only one print that has ever gone wrong, and that was caused by my error and not the machines. I thought that the large adjustment screws made bed leveling really easy, and that leveling is held even when I move the unit into another room. And lastly, I really like the large print bed. I wanted to make a helmet, because I like helmets, but I didn't find one that fit my Star Trek theme. So if you know of a helmet, doesn't have to be Star Trek, that you would like me to make, please suggest it in the comments below. And I have other ideas on how I can use 3D printing with some of my future builds. So you know that the Mega X will return in some creative way, because this is how Odin makes. Well, we do that yet, just lay things out. I want to thank Gary Aries, Lieutenant Loot, and all of my Patreon supporters. You guys really do make this show possible. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe. Have an idea for something for me to print? Please leave a comment below. And if you make any of these projects, you can send me a picture.